Mysterious radio signals from space. Alien theory is understandable, say scientists. Hello, wonderful person. So, I imagine it went something like this. This is the Chime Observatory in Canada, and we have a very important announcement. We have just detected a, a very strong radio wave source coming from another galaxy. You're telling us you found aliens? Uh, no, sir. We've just detected an unusual radio wave source. So, basically, aliens. Um, well, there is nothing to suggest that it's aliens. Uh, it's, it's a radio wave source coming from another galaxy. Uh-huh. So, aliens. No, sir, please don't get confused. Uh, radio waves doesn't actually mean radio communication. It just means... Uh-huh, hold on a second. Everybody, they found aliens. Start the presses. And uh, this is why every major news source has been actually reporting this as if it's basically aliens. And um, unusually so, there is nothing to suggest that this word was even mentioned anywhere. Uh, the mysterious radio signals does imply that it's some kind of... um radio transmission, the alien theory started popping up here and there, and in the last two days I've actually been hearing quite a lot of uh, people basically suggesting that um, it's some sort of an alien communication. And so let's get straight to the facts and talk about how, well, first of all, not aliens, and second of all, um, actually not really that important, because we still don't really know what's causing these particular radio signals. So first of all, what we've actually detected um, was a repeated fast radio burst, also known as FRB, coming from a galaxy about 1.5 billion light years away from us. And uh, what made this particular uh, detection kind of interesting is that it's the second ever repeated FRB. In other words, it's a, uh, an FRB that happened more than once on several occasions and seems to be coming from the same sort of point in space. Most of the time, FRBs uh, have actually been only detected once, but uh, this is the second one that's basically repeated. And the first one was actually detected back in um, 2015. And so this event was actually detected by this right here. This is the CHIME telescope um, located in the west part of Canada. And it's essentially a, a series of telescopes, radio telescopes specifically, that were just started last year. And as soon as they were started, we started detecting these FRBs. And um, what's really, really unusual and what's really interesting is that we are now pretty certain that these events happen pretty much on a regular basis, and it just we haven't really been detecting them very accurately. Uh, but we think that now we'll be able to detect quite a lot of them coming from different parts of uh, the universe. Now, I briefly showed you this, and this is actually um, kind of a segue uh, to explain why there's talk of extraterrestrials. When we just detected the first ever pulsar, which is this is, this is actually one of the most famous pulsars known as um, Cygnus X3, the uh, first ever detection was kind of unofficially known as LGM1, Little Green Man 1, because people thought that these radio transmissions or these radio pulses were coming from um, extraterrestrial life. Uh, with time we realized that it was actually a completely natural source and it was really formed by this very powerful, very, very dense uh, object known as a neutron star. And uh, we think that there's a slight chance, actually so far it's probably the best explanation, for what's causing FRBs as well. We think FRBs uh, that uh, have been detected in the past few years are caused in some way by a very, very, very magnetized um, neutron star, also known as a magnetar. There's actually quite a lot of different speculations about what really is happening, but for the most part, the scientists think that it's either A, uh, there's a binary object, like for example, possibly a white dwarf, that's uh, losing some of its mass, and the mass is actually falling onto the uh, magnetar, and then basically gets expulsed uh, via these astrophysical jets that you see here. And uh, on the other hand, maybe just maybe the actual magnetar is flying through a system of uh, asteroids. Maybe it's passing through an asteroid belt. And uh, as it passes through the asteroid belt, some asteroids fall onto it and thus create this energy that we see um, billions of light years away from us. Now, on the other hand, it's also possible that uh, it's an interaction between a black hole and a neutron star. But why why neutron star? Why are we so certain that it's actually, or most likely, um, a magnetar? The reason for this is because the light that we're receiving from there, 
basically the actual um, radio bursts are highly, highly twisted. T twisted and folded by something like a magnetic field, very powerful magnetic field. And we know that magnetars are the most powerful magnetic objects out there. So we are almost certain that it's got to be somehow related to this, a magnetar. Now, on the other hand, we are pretty sure that it's not a collision. It's not some kind of a catastrophic event that only happens once. Like, for example, a collision between two neutron stars or two um, black holes. The reason we think it's not um, a cataclysm, basically, is because we've detected uh, two events now that are repeated. And, and you know, you can't really have collisions happening over and over again. It just doesn't make sense. So it has to be a non-catastrophic, non-cataclysmic event that's repeatable. And this event is also extremely high in energy. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, a single event produces as much energy as our sun does in about 80 years. Um, and at the same time, the frequency produced during th these particular events um, is always very different. It's never really the same frequency. It's sort of like a multi-phase frequency of um, radio waves, which is why we are like 99.9% .9 certain it has nothing to do with aliens. This is not a radio communication. This is not a, an artificial source. It's a natural source produced by some kind of a very powerful event. And all of these events are extremely bright, very powerful, and they're also very fast. They're called fast radio bursts because they only last a few milliseconds. If you were just listening um, t for this event on your um, radio transmitter, you would not even notice it. It's just so fast. It's uh, not even a snap of a finger. It's faster than that. Uh, so in a few milliseconds, you can maybe get like 50 of them, or the, usually what happens is that you get a single event, and then within the next few minutes you get another one, within the next few minutes you get another one, um, up to about an hour you can get as many as uh, 50. And uh, we don't really know what's causing this because it's not a phenomenon we really understand yet. But nevertheless, this is actually something that we are definitely excited to study because for all we know, um, it might be a phenomenon that could actually transform our lives. Uh, we could actually have found some kind of a new source of energy that we didn't really know about before, or maybe we discovered something that um, is totally uh, beyond our expectations. So this is why for scientists, this is an extremely exciting event. It's kind of like when uh, the two black holes collided and we were able to detect their gravitational waves. But for a regular person uh, living their regular lives and even for regular scientists working in the earth sciences, this is not really that important, unfortunately. Mostly because um, this is more of a theoretical physics field right now where we really need to try to understand this first. So I'm sorry to be the bearer of the bad news. This is absolutely not the aliens. This is also not particularly that interesting to most people. However, um, depending on what's really causing this, this could actually transform our lives. If it is a magnetar just flying through an asteroid belt, then, well, it's actually kind of disappointing because it just doesn't really mean anything to us and it won't really help us with our regular lives. But if this is some kind of a new uh, object that we didn't really know existed and is creating this very interesting energy, in that case, it could be something extremely interesting to us and may even help us um, eventually live better lives. But only the future will tell what this is all about. And hopefully we'll hear more about FRBs in 2019 because I honestly have been actually following this topic for a very long time. And you could probably explain everything about FRBs in like two pages of writing. That's how little we know about them. We literally know nothing. There are over 500 publications right now. And for the most part, they're just speculations, just kind of thoughts and um, observations. We don't really know what's happening. But it is very fun. And it's very, very, very exciting that maybe one day in the next few decades, we'll actually know for a fact what this is. Just like the pulsars, this could be actually a new object. Well, anyway, on that note, um, yeah, not aliens but something really cool. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you learned a little bit more about FRBs and specifically the detection of 2019 that um, had basically almost every media source going crazy. Yep, not aliens though. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and as always, bye-bye. 
Oh, and if you would like to support us here on Patreon, it does help me quite a lot. Mostly because um, I have now officially become a full-time YouTuber and basically depend on everything that I make here on this platform. On that note, thank you for all of your support, those of you who did actually support me for many, many months and years. And um, I'll see you tomorrow.